So uh, you guys requested that I do a contouring your eyes updated video, which is what I'm going to do today. Basically contouring your eyes is eyeshadow. That's like what, it, what we use eyeshadow for. But a lot of people don't really understand or I can imagine that it can be kind of difficult to understand like when you're watching all these tutorials of people doing these like cut creases and smoky eyes and whatever, uh, halo eyes to be like, why? Like, what's the point? Why am I putting this color in this area? So today I wanted to show you how to contour your eyes. Oof. I don't think anything broke. Can I tell you that is definitely not the first time that that has happened. Um, okay, so for today's video, I'm gonna be using my Hindash palette because I feel like this is a really good example of a palette that might appear overwhelming to people, but it's actually much more user-friendly than you might think. Let me zoom you out a little bit. So Hindash created this palette literally as like a paint palette. That's what it is. So these eyeshadows you can see gradiate into different shades, right? So you have like slightly warmer shades, slightly cooler shades. Uh, it gives you a lot of possibilities and might seem overwhelming. In fact, when I first saw the palette, I was a little bit like, oh, I immediately felt overwhelmed and just kind of like, I don't know what I'm gonna do with that. But the more I used it, the more I really realized <laughs> how incredibly like user-friendly it is. Now you can see that we have like a pretty extensive range from light to dark, right? So depending on your skin tone, you want to start off with, or it can be, I mean, necessary, you don't necessarily have to, but it can be very helpful to start off with a transition shade, which is going to be like one or two shades darker than your skin tone. And it's basically just going to be like your base uh, to start contouring. Now you have a few different options in this palette to start that, depending on your skin tone. For me, because I'm like white, uh, this is a great transition shade. Either of, the, well, maybe this color is a great transition shade. Either of these, uh, these might be a little bit dark, but I can actually like tap into this and tap into that to mix something that I want. If you're a little bit more medium tan than any of these colors probably. And then for deep skin, this would be probably like a very beautiful, depending on like how deep your, your skin tone is. So there's lots of possibilities. This is the BH Cosmetics Los Angeles palette. This is one of my favorite eyeshadow palettes. I've just been using it a lot recently because I just feel like it's like summer, you know? Um, this could be a little bit overwhelming if you are uncomfortable with color, especially like translating, if you're used to doing neutral eyeshadow looks and you're just like, I don't understand how to translate this to color. A really great trick is to squint at your palette to determine the value of an eyeshadow color. So for instance, if I squint, now obviously this is the lightest shade. Uh, if I'm squinting, I can kind of see that like this and this are pretty close in value. So this is a little bit lighter, this is a little bit lighter. You can see if you squint that these two shades are the darkest in the palette, then probably this green, then probably this purple. Uh, and then like this color, maybe this one, then to the brown, you know what I mean? So squinting is going to really help you determine the value of the shadows. For instance, if you looked at this brown and you were like, okay, this is gonna be my transition shade. And you're like, but I wanna do color. I don't wanna use brown. I don't wanna start off with brown. I wanna do color. Squint at this, it's very close to this color. So say you're doing purple, then this would be your transition shade. And then maybe you would do a little bit of blending with this. And then maybe this would be your lid shade. Does that make sense? When I recently did a, an eyeshadow look, I started off with this as my transition shade, and then I went into this blue and blended those together. Now this palette has a lot of possibilities in terms of blending. You want to be cognizant of the color wheel. <laughs> Something that's really important to know, and I will pop up a little image of the color wheel, is complementary colors are the colors that are on the opposite ends of the, co of the color wheel. Why did I put that down? For instance, this is gold, but pretend it's yellow, right? It's like pretty yellowy gold. If you mix this with this purple, they're opposites on the color wheel, you're gonna get kind of like a muddy brown color, all right? They are going to neutralize each other. So they're going to remove basically the saturation of color. But next to each other, if you see them next to each other, they make each other pop, which is why you're gonna see people who have rosacea use a green color corrector to cancel out the redness and then put their foundation on, right? So it's all about understanding like how colors are going to work together. Now with the Hindash palette, he did a lot of interesting things by going slightly cooler with colors and slightly warmer with colors. So you have a range, like for instance, 
uh, what's this called, Boy and Wonder, you can see that this is a little bit more warm, kind of like a, a peachy color, and then it transitioned into a slightly more cool toned, comparatively pink. Same with this, you have this nice warm brown and it starts to transition into a cooler toned, it's actually a pretty warm gray, um, but it starts to transition into a cooler tone, right? So this is a little bit lighter, more like orangey, transitions into an, like an orangey red, and same with this. But he was very specific when he chose these colors so that they would blend into each other well. So it might look overwhelming, but you actually have, like all of these colors are going to work together. So we're gonna come to work with color. So I'm going to start off with boy, which is a little bit lighter, or a little bit darker than my skin tone. And it's just this really nice, pretty peachy color. Literally all of my eyeshadow brushes are dirty and I just have not washed them. So I'm going in with uh, this e.l.f. blending brush. It's the only one that I have. All right, now you have to look at your eye shape. So my eyes are slightly hooded. I have slightly hooded lids, which means that this part of my, um, of my eye anatomy kind of folds over my lid, right? So if I go like, if I raise them up, you can kind of see like this is where my eye socket uh, or around my eye socket goes. So this is where you want to trace, trace? place your transition shade because basically when you're contouring your eyes, you're just defining around the eye socket. Like that's what it is. And keep in mind that dark colors are going to push areas back in space. Light colors are going to bring them forward. If you're just like making it very basic, you could be like, well, why don't I just go in with a ridiculously dark color and push this area back in space uh, to define my eye socket. Oh, I gotta, we gotta blend, you guys, we gotta blend. So you gotta start off with something that's going to be a little bit lighter to do your initial base color, and it's going to give you something to blend into. So I'm using Boy, and I'm gonna look down because my eyes are slightly hooded, so. Oh, you should get more in here, why are you so far away? So I'm looking down into a mirror, and I'm going to place this just above my crease. Now, if I turn like this, you can kind of see, like this is the inner part, like I, if I can kind of feel it around my eyeball. So I wanna go, just above that because if I'm looking forward, you can see that like this area of my brow bone, kind of like when it's white like this, when it's nice and light, it comes forward and it kind of drags my eyes down. So I like to push that area back in space. So I start just above where my actual crease is. I'm gonna take it about halfway and then I'm going to slowly blend that up and out because I actually want this area to be darker This hand? What is it doing? <laughs> so I like to blend all the way up to the brow bone because I have all this real estate up here, right? And if I just leave that light, it just kind of drags my eye down. So I'm placing it again, placing the majority of the pigment just above the natural crease of my eye. And then slowly blending it up to my brow. And then as I get out here, because like this area comes down quite a bit, it kind of does like this motion, you know, like it goes like that. I'm gonna kind of sweep out to the tail of my brow to give that a little bit of a lift. Now, obviously if your eyes are more like slanted upward, if you already have a natural lift, then you don't need to do this. This is going to be, it's just, I mean, you can, I guess, but it's just going to give you like even more, it's just gonna make it more exaggerated. Oh, I already primed, by the way, uh, with my e.l.f. primer, just so everybody knows. Okay, so we've sort of created this shape, right? See how it goes from here out? So it's giving already giving my eyes a little bit of a lift. Now for my lower lash line, I like to, like I have this under eye bag right here that kind of just like comes forward. When this comes forward, it kind of like uh, accentuates the hollow of my under eye don't love. So I like to push that back in space. And the way that I do that is, I'm gonna use a little, what is this? This is the BH Cosmetics Smudge Brush. This is so good. Uh, just like a little dome or a pencil brush, something like that. I'm gonna pick up that same color, boy. Um, and I'm going to run this, hello, all underneath my eye bag. So I'm gonna take it right here, basically like wherever it kind of like bulges out. So cute. Anyway, so I'm doing the same thing. I'm just building this up and you can smoke it out as much as you want. I have a lot of real estate. I love to make it look smoky. Uh, it also kind of helps to like hide the creases that I have under my eyes, you know? And I'm just going to lightly connect it to the upper part, following that lift. 
All right, I'm gonna grab this smaller blending brush. This is the e.l.f. pointed eye pencil brush. I'm so confused by this name. Uh, but it's like a little duo, fri duo fiber. Uh, and I'm gonna pick up Love, this color right here, which is just like the nice, you know, orangey color. So we're kind of like, just tra uh, we're just kind of like going down the line as far as like value of color. So obviously like if you squint, this one's a little bit darker than this one. You can see maybe we would make the next jump to like this color and then this color, if that makes sense. So I'm picking up Love, focusing that on the tip of the brush. I'm gonna use this to define even more. So once again, where I started off, just above my crease, which, like if I'm looking like this, you can kind of see like that's the line, that's kind of like where it, my uh, skin starts to fold over, so I'm going above that. So now I'm just using a more detailed brush to define that area a little bit more. Taking it in a little further. Picking up the original brush that we use the first one and just blending around the edges. Uh, I'm picking up that tiny smudge, or the smudge brush from BH, picking up that same color, and to just kind of like intensify this lift, I'm going to focus this on the outer corner. Take it just, why do you focus on my earrings so much? Into the center. All right, now, following this line, I'm gonna go in with Intra, this nice warm brown. I'm actually gonna use this brush by LaRousse, LR110 shadow brush. Uh, and I'm gonna focus it just like literally on the tip. And then I'm gonna use this too. Just deepen up the definition kind of following that um, triangular shape, that cat eye, really light hand. I'm gonna go back in with my uh, e.l.f. brush, no additional product, just what's ever on it already, and blend around the edges. And then for my lower lash line, I'm gonna grab a little flat brush. This is the e.l.f. flat eyeliner brush. I'm gonna pick up Intra. I'm going to run that just on the outer part of the lash line, just right there, not even taking it all the way in. I'm gonna grab um, the smudge brush. Once again, no additional product, and I'm just gonna blend that. Now, the darker you make this area, the more it's going to lift it up and push this area back in space. Uh, the next thing that I'm gonna do, well, first I'm gonna, oh, I don't know what to do. I'm gonna start off, I'm gonna use my Sigma, <laughs> Sigma E 4054 brush and uh, my favorite like packing brush. And I'm gonna grab Kills, which is the bright red. Where is it, this one? I'm gonna pack that on the outer corner. Now the outer corner is kind of just like up to you. It's one of those things where you can leave it light but it might bring your eye, it's gonna bring this area forward, you know what I mean? So it's gonna bring a definition to here, but if you darken this up a little bit more, it, it keeps this area with the lift. And if you lighten this area, it just, it literally does this to your eye. So if you feel like your eyes sag down a little bit or you just wanna give them a little bit more of a lift, then just keep the deeper shades on the outer corner. So I'm gonna blend this in the outer part because I don't want to lose this shape, but I just want to keep that color. So kind of creating a little bit of a C shape, blending into the contour, tapping into the center. And then for the very inner half, uh, I'm going to pick up yet another E54 brush, it's my favorite. And I'm gonna grab Wet, which is this beautiful cream shade, this color, and I'm gonna pack that on the inner part of the lid. So same thing, keeping it inside. And then when I get to the center, just tapping. Um, okay, so I just applied a few coats of my Wayne Goss mascara and a little bit of highlight. So hopefully you can see the difference that it makes in the actual shape of my eye. You can kind of see that like on this side, this part is sort of like bringing my eye down along with like this area that is light. So it's also kind of like bringing the eye downward. 
Um, whereas on this side with the like nice light opening up here and then we have all of the dark going up into this shape and also accentuating the dark over here but keeping like this inner corner light is going to help kind of like create a little bit more of a lift. Now there are like more exaggerated ways that you can give your eyes a lift. You guys have probably seen that crazy like fox eye tutorial basically everywhere. I do have one um, and it's just a matter of like placing light and dark in certain areas to sort of like do this to your eyes. Does that make sense? Uh, it's all contouring, even with eyeliner, it's all contouring. So hopefully if you were very confused about like how to use color, how to translate this with color, because I know it can be very easy when you're looking at a neutral palette, it's very easy to look at it and be like, okay, light, dark, medium, what a highlight, whatever, you know? Um, but it can be a little bit more complicated when you have pr uh, palettes that have not only like color, but also multiple colors, like the BH uh, Los Angeles palette. You know, it's kind of all over the place. Doesn't even really have any like super deep darks. Anyway, if you guys have a specific palette that you are struggling with, please let me know and I'd be happy to show you how to create eyeshadow looks using that. I know that this has been like very requested on my channel, just kind of like how to go about creating an eyeshadow look, how to go about like mixing colors. And it's one of my favorite things. So I would be happy to do that. Let me know. Bye.